Hey all, Binks here. I was lucky enough to be able to step through a time door and bring you some amazing Loki gameplay right now at the very beginning of the Loki for all time season. Uh, I was really excited looking at Loki and thinking about possibilities of how to play him. And really it's just a card that brings an RNG Fiesta, being able to play a bunch of different games with him, uh, trying a bunch of different decks. I found a deck that I think is absolutely disgusting and an absolute blast to play. Loki himself is a three energy five power that says on reveal, replace your hand with cards from your opponent's starting deck, give them minus one cost. So we're going to be able to get cards that our opponent has in their deck, which are generally going to be pretty good. And also the cards that we get are going to have synergy with each other. So if we are collecting a bunch of cards from our opponent's hand, let's say we get five or six cards and they have some synergy in their deck, often that synergy is going to line up. So the deck that I chose to use to highlight Loki the very best is a deck I call Loki Hates Dinos. Uh, so the goal of this deck is to pump up our collector as much as possible. Collector gets a plus one power for every card that gets handed to your deck uh, from anywhere except your deck. So Loki does trigger collector. So the more cards that we have in our hand, when we trigger that Loki, the collector is going to absolutely blast off. And trust me, if you see some of these clips ahead, the collector gets ridiculous. Uh, so other cards that we have to support this are Quinjet. Quinjet is Loki's best friend. Pretty much every Loki deck, uh, if you're focusing on playing the Loki pretty often, is going to want to have Quinjet jet to be able to discount those cards uh, we have zabu in here because we have two four costs and nick fury and white queen but also uh, i just think that getting a lot of energy cheat on your loki turn is crazy so if your opponent has any four cost cards in their deck and you have zabu down you're going to get an additional trigger so if you have quinjet zabu and loki those four cost cards are going to cost a single energy really really crazy uh, and then we just have a bunch of cards that are going to add cards to our hand agent 13 mirage we have the maria hill in here sentinel agent colson Nick Fury and White Queen. And we do run the Shabbos. I would absolutely recommend running the Shabbos if you're, you're trying to hit this deck. The Collector and drawing the Collector is so important. Getting the Quinjet is so important. Getting the Loki is so important. Uh, Shabbos is just going to help you do that and, and add. And, you know, on turn five, you can just add cards to your hand to fill your hand, knowing that there's nothing to top deck other than that Shabbos if it's not something that you're going for. Uh, overall, this deck was awesome. It is so much fun. I'm so excited for all of you to get your hands on Loki uh, and give it a try and I hope that these highlights get you really excited for the season. As always, if you're enjoying this content, make sure to hit the like button. Check down below, make sure you subscribe, and you can catch you live at twitch.tv slash binks underscore plays. Enjoy. You peace! So one of our least, like, over, of these three cards, I might play Zabu last, which is pretty nuts. Absolutely slam the collector over here on the left. We're going to snap as well. Collector on, on throne room goes nuts. If our opponent has strong chi, obviously it can give us some issues, but... I mean, the collector just gets so insanely big in these decks. Um, I think Zabu Agent Thirteen is probably the play. We don't want a Loki yet. We'll we'll get a we'll get a good Loki in. Don't don't you worry. Don't you worry. We will get a good Loki in. We'll go Zabu. We'll get double Agent Thirteen here. Next turn might just be Nick Fury. We'll we'll kind of see. Oh, they got the nice Deathlock variant. Gotta love the nice Deathlock variant here. Okay, but Winter Soldier is gonna be the biggest card. But Agent 13 is gonna slowly start to uh, pull that back for us. Wait, we can actually double Loki, right? The the double Loki? Isn't this gonna go absolutely nuts on the collector? I guess we should just start playing some like uh, contingency stuff over here on the left. I don't really want to get this echo out of hand because we might have some other stuff. But if we play Loki on Convertage, I'm pretty sure it double buffs the collector for everything that's in our hand. That's that's wild. And we can actually, <laughs> what's crazy is we can play Mirage Loki, which will add two cards to our hand. Oh my gosh, my opponent setting me up for the craziest. Oh, thank you for snapping. Mirage Loki. Look at look at how big this collector is going to be. It's going to go up by 16 points. So it should... Oh my gosh. 16 point collector buff. It's going to go up by 32 total because of the, the throne room. Look at this. Oh my gosh. 
get destroyed. <laughs> like, I guess I should have been paying attention between... I should have been paying attention between those two <laughs> to see, like, what, what was happening. Oh, my gosh. Um, all right, I guess we just, <laughs> we, we just got to win here now. Um, what's the best way that we could do that? Is we could go, like, boom, boom, boom. Uh, if we if we are so so inclined, and then we could still go here here. I don't think they're gonna beat us over on the left. I think we're gonna be okay. Uh, I think we're gonna be okay. <laughs> oh, if they had Shang Chi, I would have been a little bit upset. Look at that collector, man. Holy dude, that was one of the coolest plays I've seen in a very long while. Maybe we shouldn't have made this Carnage play for, um, specifically for opponent's null reasons, but, uh, man, that is a half-baked casserole, if I have ever seen one. <laughs> right, Asteroid M Gaming. Let's see what we can do here. Agent 13 on 1 obviously feels good. I generally like to start to get Asteroid M a little bit filled, just so that we can eventually make choices to try and play 3 and 4 cost cards off of it. It can get very, very annoying uh, if you just kind of let it be full and then you, you kind of run out of choices later on in the game. Got an Iron Fist coming out from the opponent. Mojo World. Mojo World indeed. Um, Offer the Maria Hill or the Mirage here. Let's go with the Mirage. Try and get one of their low cost, powerful cards. Next turn could potentially be Loki. I guess we'll just kind of see. Uh, if they have a bunch of movement cards with Asteroid M, maybe it is worth it to just get Loki. Maybe try and get the Vultures and some things things like that situated. Um, to try and out-Vulture our opponent. We'll see what the Mirage grants us, right? Then maybe we can make a choice if we want to really play this card. Doctor Strange, it's fine. Uh, Bar with no name. A bit interesting. We don't really have any ways to play around it. I mean, with Quinjet, we kind of want to hold on to Loki, but also only have six board spots available. How are we going to utilize these? Just rip the Loki. Uh, we'll play it left because they can have Craven, different things like that. We'd rather have access to what's in their deck. Uh, okay, I'm going to change my opinion. <laughs> going to immediately change my mind again and play Maria Hill Quinjet instead. Um... I just want access to, to good cards that they may have uh, available. Dagger's pretty rude. Doctor Strange goes there over to the left. Lots of moving parts here. Maria Hill, what you got us? Nova. Quinn Jeff for extra discounts. Uh, we'll let the Loki ride, but there's no reason to really play anything else next to it, so... Uh, hopefully this Loki can kind of get us out of a jam here. We're not in a great spot. Yeah, getting the vultures are, are very scary. Hopefully, like, um, Iron Fist, uh, Iron Fist and Vulture would be very nice for us. We do get Iron Fist and Vulture, exactly what we asked for. Uh, so we play the Iron Fist, the Vulture moves once, the Vulture moves twice. Uh, hopefully gets us over the top over here on the left, but... Uh, man, we are running out of space. We're running out of space really bad. And we don't really have anything too good to, to land middle. Uh, I guess we can play the Shavas and maybe this double moving vulture is gonna be gonna be enough sauce for us. Forge Hulkbuster, Forge Cloak. Wait, that, that's actually so good for us. So now this vulture is just gonna go on its own little trip. Go to a 3-8. Go to a 3-13. Our opponent doesn't know just how much help they gave us here. Pull the vulture over, slam the Chavez left, call it a damn day, baby. Opponent snapped on us too. Hulkbuster on the bar with no name is a joke. To get pulled over, very interesting choice actually. And we win the tiebreaker by five, yo. Actually, really smart play by our opponent to play that Hulkbuster out over on the right. Uh, to pull it into Bar With No Name without combining it. Maybe, uh, well, you get two things, right? You get the Craven buff with it, but then also maybe you're scared of 
some kind of Chavez play that might be, or, or some kind of Shang-Chi play. Very cool by our opponent, but we take the W there. Wow, isn't this amazing? TVA game with Loki. I think we're ripping Loki on three 100% of the time, right? TVA game with Loki. How insanely, insanely thematic here. So we can use Agent 13 and Mirage to keep our hand nice and full. Rit the Loki on turn three and then just win with what they have. Don't have my Loki! Okay. <laughs> the audacity. Could just play the Mojo out. Could play the Zabu. Get us some extra energy cheat. Uh, I think the Zabu is the play. Potentially they have some four cost cards in their hand, right? They'll, they'll cost two if we get them. So if we can like snag a couple of four cost cards uh, directly out of their hand, we could have a lot of things going for us. Extra energy. Maybe we top like a one drop here. That'd be always nice. We get the collector. Hmm. Do we just have to make the change and play the collector here? I think we have to make the change and play the collector. Collector mojo. We'll go mojo left, maybe. Uh, that collector should get bigger than just about anything they can play, I would imagine. But we will make the switch here and not just go directly to Loki. They play Green Goblin. Not not gonna be all that all that scary on our end. Can still pump quite a bit left. One drop would be great here. We don't. So both Loki and Fury give us the same amount, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, the problem is that they can attack right and get a bigger card than us middle. We're in a little bit of trouble. But uh, I gotta imagine the Loki over here on the left is gonna be enough. And we gotta, we gotta finish it with Loki on the TVA, right? How can we do anything except for playing Loki on the TVA here? Bump up our collector by three. Storm on the throne room, not on the TVA, to try and get around maybe the doubling, but still enough to get a nice, delicious casserole here. Not too shabby, Loki, not too shabby. Okay, cloud side turn one, I mean, pretty easy pass, right? Opponent probably does the same. Bonka bonka. Next turn, probably Sentinel. Maybe do an early Loki game this game. We got like Sentinel and Agent 13 Zabu into Loki. That sounds good. Loki on four. Nice. -y. Maybe if we get a Quinjet too, Quinjet would be very, very helpful. Delaying the Loki until you get Quinjet, I think, is incredibly powerful. I mean, just having a handful of double discounted cards is is pretty nutty. And they're cards that your opponent puts into your deck too. La, ah, another TVA game. Uh, all right, we're letting it ride then uh, all day. We're just slamming the Loki right. We're saying, hey, you probably have some cheap cards in your hand. Give me all of them. I will play them all out and beat you on the TVA. Time's up, by the way. I mean, just look at this output, right? This is wild. Win all three lanes profit chat. That's the way we do it. They could have also Scarlet Witch, but we'll see. Dude, Loki seems crazy with TVA. If you just like have it in your hand, you can just slam it. I guess that's like a, as good a reason as any, right? To, uh, to to have a good Loki location. I guess we're gonna have one. You might as well have it be on the TVA. But this is the second time we played out this, uh, this Loki on the TVA and just crushed. Just to absolutely want our opponent. All right, Machine World helps our collector. Loki helps our collector. Maria Hill helps our collector. We got some energy cheating Zabu. Let's hit the snap button. Get her going here. Uh, I think that obviously we just get the collector down. Get it probably off New York. Don't really want it right. We don't want to give them one. So we'll play it on New York. It doesn't feel great. But it's just kind of the hand that we're dealt. Opponent discards their own collector. Happy I didn't give them one because they probably wanted one. Uh, we could just go double energy cheat here, I kind of dig. Just double up the energy cheat uh, and start getting prepped for a Loki turn. Next turn is probably White Queen. Maybe White Queen and an additional card if we have that ability. That would be ideal. Okay, opponent's giving us cards. Thank you, thank you. I've always wanted some cards, so I appreciate you giving me them. Especially cheap ones. Cheap ones are even better. 
Okay. Uh, we can give our opponent a white queen. I'm not too worried about that. Or I think we want two, right? So we go probably go Maria Hill Sentinel. Helps continue to buff our collector. It takes up obviously more board space, but sets up better for a Loki. So you can always play Sentinel Loki next turn. Uh, which is quite strong. Okay, our opponent has a Swarm, so we know it's in their deck too. Again, just further helping our Collector potentially, uh, if we can uh, get a version of it out. Monsor Luke Cage. Uh, yeah, I think we just kind of do everything here. We'll go here, here, here. Uh, add a bunch of cards to our hand. Pump up our Collector like crazy. Throw some garbage to our opponent's hand that's like just kind of fine. Um call it a day more cards a little bit of more cards and then just a lot more cards Wong huh okay Morbin time indeed. Uh, this is kind of wild. Uh, we can go like... Um, I mean, this doesn't obviously doesn't do a full double discard, but we still get three and the Morbius becomes six. Uh, I think this is still fine. Let's still do this. And maybe our opponent, uh, I guess our opponent won't add cards to her hand. Maybe they can pump our collector a little bit. I don't know. Let's just play a bunch of cool stuff. I like when I could play the cool thing and do the cool stuff. You know what I mean, chat? I just love being able to play the cool thing. Just move stuff around. Discard my whole hand. I like the opponent playing the hyper discard. Always a big fan. Be gone. And the Morbius. For six. I play the Dracula. You can have a lot of garbage in your hand though, my dude. They still get the APOC? They had seven cards in hand! <laughs> oh, they had seven cards in their hand. They still just ripped the APOC. <laughs> Start off with the hub. Always good for us. Uh, Quinjet on one. Always great. This is why we run Shabbos in the deck, uh, by the way. If you were so wondering why Shabbos is in a deck like this, it's always about trying to get to our key cards early. Collector, Quinjet, Loki, all so important for this deck to work. Uh, if we are investing in uh, a couple extra percentage points uh, early off, we're going to be a lot better off. I think we might go Agent 13 Maria Hill directly into Loki. Uh, just keep spreading our resources out here. I think it's quite nice. Very pleasant position to be in. Um, depends though. I mean, we can, we can get some some more. Again, we have a pretty one-drop focused deck, it looks like here. Uh, Quinjet gives us a Green Goblin. Maria Hill gives us a Lucas Cage. Uh, maybe we just go Green Goblin, Luke Cage here. Into Nick Fury, into Loki. Oh my gosh, the energy cheat is actually out of control, chat. Um, okay, let's take up some space on their side. Let's get our Zabu down. I don't know if our Luke Cage is going to be super relevant. I might just be more inclined to just turn that into a different card. Uh, but we have a lot of energy cheat right now. Like, like we have Elysium, Zabu, Quinjet. Uh, maybe we get a random Sarah somehow. We get every single way to cheat energy in the entire game. I'd be down for that. I, I, I can't complain too much. The debris is actually quite annoying here because we, we are, you know, ideally hoping to... Find ways to kind of blow things out of the water. Uh, but we can just go Nick Fury Loki here. And I, I think that is the line that we're going to take. Just get a bunch of random sauce in our hand. Maybe we go Loki Nick Fury. Get some six cost options because we have so much. I think we actually do go Loki Lick, Nick Fury here. So swap these small cards out. Add a bunch of six costs and then get whatever's in their deck to, to try and figure out what their game plan might be. I think that that's probably the best route that we can go down here. Uh, if they have too much more disruption, though, it can get a bit annoying. 
But being able to drop a six drop over on the left feels quite strong. Good job with that scorpion, buddy. Unfortunately, we're not using those cards anymore. We'll swap them for yours. Uh, we have Debris, Angela Watu. Honestly, not what we were looking for. So I'm kind of happy that I did this Nick Fury line the way that we did it. Um, and what we could do here is we could simply just slam down a Thanos left. And then, pff, I, if it's me, I just... <laughs> what are they going to do if we do this, right? And we can even, uh, we can even add a couple extra here. Just in case we want to get over the top. But we're going to fulfill them, right? <laughs> use their own debris against them like you're, you're trying to do all these like funky little strats where you, you know we, we're not worrying about stuff and then we simply just full fear <laughs> <fill> you <laughs> i don't i don't think that sarah's gonna do you too well my friend but uh we'll see if you can find a line here <laughs> nice yeah that, that's one of the cool things about loki right is get, getting access to these cards that you can use against your opponent uh, that they might, they, they just, you know, aren't, aren't exactly expecting. Very, very cool game there. Mirage, Zabu, and Maria Hill. All decent choices. Uh, if we don't get Collector, we might go Zabu and a White Queen. Zabu and a White Queen is quite pleasant. Uh, obviously, we play the Collector, though. Collector over on the left, hit the snap button. Collector loves being on the throne room, man. I tell you what, the Collector is a big fan of being on the throne room in this deck. Opponent gets rid of their Pixel Collector. Interesting choice. A bit rude, I may say, but, you know, to each their own. Uh, Loki on five is almost always going to be our play. How do we set up for that properly? Let's go Maria Hill this turn. Potentially give us a small drop to play. Uh, again, we're just going to try and charge this collector and get him bigger that our opponent can't even imagine beating it, which uh, shouldn't be too hard with this hand. Uh, collector is getting very high is very, very common. Uh, they're already going to try and fight us with the Morbius, but uh, I'm fairly confident, if I'm being honest with you, uh, that we're going to have enough to actually like surpass what they want to do here. Um, if we go Mirage, Sentinel, next turn we can go Sentinel Loki for a huge collector buff. I think we can outpace this Morbius. It's kind of crazy to think because Morbius gets plus two and collector gets plus one and Morbius is arguably an easier <laughs> effect to pull off. I think we can outpace it with Loki, man. Loki goes a little bit a little bit funky. Plus, we can get like things like um, swarms that started in their deck, uh, different things like that. So maybe we can find some uh, some cool stuff. Cosmo, okay, they stopped my Mirage, which is very rude, but uh, it's not too much too much damage that we have to deal with there. Let's put our Sentinel over here on the left, and we go Loki over on the right. Uh, so this will get us one. Seven total collector's buffs get bringing him up to uh, what would that put us to? 11. So it's already already doing a lot of damage against the Morbius. This is probably our biggest play to, to do this. And then, like I said, I mean, we could pull swarms from their deck, uh, we could pull a lot of really nice things out of their deck that uh, can continue to increase our collector even more. Uh, continue to try to outpace this Morbius. Boom. Um. Yeah, Lady Sif helps us here. Uh, Morbius is only for each card I discarded this game. We have two Chavezes. We have a, a plethora of Chavezes. Um, boom, 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 boom. So we can go like Morbius, Hellcow, Lady Sif. Hopefully the Hellcow can knock the Chavez out of our hands so that the Lady Sif can target the Apoc. Um, but we're just going to add 10 over to the right. We're going to... I think our Collector will outpace. I, I'm very confident our Collector will outpace their cards. Get the right Chavez, please. Right Chavez. Or the Apoc. That's fine. So it's, uh, it's uh, pretty much the same thing that we, that we would get there. Just bumping our, our Collector even more. Getting out ahead as, as high as we can. Man, that Collector loves the throne room, I tell you what. Yeah, really cool. With Loki, it's all about understanding what cards that you can pull from your opponent that might actually help based on their archetype, too. So knowing that I have, like, Apoc Swarm and stuff to continue to push this Collector just makes me so confident to keep going down the path of trying to have the Collector outpace the Morbius, which is uh, how we won the game very, very handily. Actually. Rare time will go Zabu early. More, more energy cheat. This deck's all about energy cheat, man. We'll be so inclined to do Zabu early. Ooh, it's a pretty card. 
Okay, we have Dark Dimension set here. We can go directly into Nick Fury. I don't know if that's the play, though. I could, we get access to a bunch of cards, but like, you can't really do anything with them. And our hand is kind of stuck being full because all the rest of our cards add cards to our hand. Um, Let's hide the Agent 13 and just play the Mirage out. I just don't want like my hand to be completely full of things, right? It's kind of annoying. So then you can't draw, we can't get to our cool cards that we want to play. Oh, baby. Stop playing nice variants on me, you're going to make me jealous. Moor Island, very, very kind. I think we go here, here, over on Moor Island. 1-4 Iceman, pretty strong card. I, I do declare that is a very powerful, uh, powerful card. That's my my sentinel, kind of rude. Uh, we definitely have the advantage here as far as uh, being ahead on Moor Island, and we can even play our crossbones over in the middle. Or we could be really rude and we could play leech, whatever we so choose. Uh, I think that we're okay with now getting just the collector down over there and slamming a crossbones middle. Um, what's that? Green Goblin. Like, a bit annoying, but I mean, they still have to put in work to, to get ahead here, right? It's not quite as easy as you might expect. We'll just leech our opponent as a joke. We even let them know that we're going to leech them. Wow. Yeah, see, I mean, this is a bad play unless they have... I mean, and it doesn't matter. We were leeching their hand, right? Even if they have, like, the, the strongest thing you could ever ask for over there on the left. It's not going to be enough. We get our Nick Fury, our White Queen, going to pump up our Collector by plus four. This is going to be a plus 15 play over here on the left, just dominating them. We already have the Crossbones and the Agent 13 set to get even additional power, I believe, because we get four. Agent 13 would give us an even uh, another knock on the Collector. Not, not too shabby of a game. All right, Collector on two, Loki on three, potentially. We could also go Mirage something. Uh, so we get like Mirage and maybe like a Quinjet or a Agent 13. Uh, we'd obviously much rather do that. Uh, the early Loki is kind of interesting, but um, we'll just have to see how our opponent plays this. Okay, give us a Korg. Maybe a one-drop focus deck. Daily Bugle, always good. Would have wished that would have come down last turn, but uh, I digress. Uh, we'll get the Collector going left. I do not think that they're going to be able to outpace our Collector, especially if we Loki on four. Uh, if we opt to Loki on four, I don't really see how they could possibly beat this collector. Uh, which I think is what we will do. I mean, we could just go... Slam the Coulson here, probably. Let's let's start taking shot pot shots right. We slam the Coulson into, like, Iceman Loki. I think Iceman's worth playing uh, over the collector buff. It's a pretty solid card. Uh, so we'll go Agent Colts in here. We'll, we'll lose a draw, but we're going to Loki next turn anyway. Obviously, being able to get the Quinjet would be nice. But uh, I think we'll just be able to burst far enough ahead here. Opponent plays Loki against us! That's my Loki from Daily Bugle, you piece. All right. We'll play both left. This gives us 10... 12 power all coming left to get to 16. They could potentially beat this with the uh, random card in our deck. Um, but uh, I think we'll snap. I think we'll make them pay. I think we'll make them pay to try and uh, beat us over here on the left. What do they need? A seven power card? I don't have one of those on my deck. Ah, they just give on the hollow. They're scared. Another Loki? Wait, dude, they could have got me. Potentially with like collector, would that have worked? I don't, I don't know, man. We blow up all their cards. Feeling pretty good about that. Um, I said we go here. Here. Uh, even if this Hobgoblin doesn't survive, we can Carnage it. Uh, maybe we want to go... Let's let's actually push right. 
Uh, they could potentially block our Hobgoblin, but it's kind of a psycho play. They're running a bit out of cards. Uh, but we'll see. We can always Carnage it if that is their play. The Loki Mirror. World's first Loki Mirror here. Carnage their own Zabu. Interesting play line. Interesting play line there. All right, chill. All right, cool, cool, cool. Love to see that. Um, what are we gonna try and smash middle? Holy, not a great spot to be in, honestly. Not super comfortable, um, by any means. We don't really have a way to win right at all. So we're kind of just have to fight them for middle. And unfortunately our best play for that is a simple Chavez. I guess we can just Chavez right. It loses them playing anything that doesn't get uh, danger roomed right. But just the way that these cards line up and crossbones not being able to be played really puts us in a bit of a pickle. Uh, they must have had crossbones in their deck then, huh? That's weird that they had crossbones in their deck, because I'm like the only one who does that. All right, let it ride. Tough position to be in for eight. Not the most ideal position to be in for eight. They go middle. They're out, Chavez, you piece! They gotta play two Lokis in many ways. That's kind of cheating. Watch that one too.